This is CES M M A. You know, Scott, we told our viewers on DirecTV pay-per-view, don't blink before the Brennan Ward fight, and we were right on the money. I say again, don't blink in this one. Josh has a tendency to come out in cr at a crazy pace, a frantic pace. All right, we're ready to go. Round number one, Josh Diekman in the red, Tyler King in the black. Josh, Josh is assuming a nice short stance. You see how he's lowering his stance to stuff that takedown as Tyler's looking to clinch and throw knees. Josh did a great job. His low stance is what prevented that takedown. Yeah, there's a lot of shuffling in those first 10 or 15 seconds. Both fighters keeping their balance. Now Josh has his hands on Tyler's hips, trying to keep his hips off for those knees. Tyler was able to finish the takedown. Nice takedown by Tyler King. Josh has now recovered full guard. It will try to keep his posture, keep Tyler's posture down. At the very least, has his back toward the cage where he could walk his way back up if he is forced to do so or if he attempts to do so. You're going to see Josh also. Yes, you're 100% right. It, it's the more advantageous for him to try to walk that cage. Josh is, Josh is looking to try to get his hips extended. He closed his guard yet again. And he's looking to, of course, control these punches. And you and Josh Seekman have a common opponent, Scott, Pat Schultz. We do. We both had a yeah, very good night against Patrick. <laughs> Tyler, Tyler did a great job passing the half guard there. At the time when Diekman knocked out Schultz, he was unbeaten, so it just shows the heavy hands and the knockout ability of Tyler uh, of Josh Diekman, rather. Two-thirds of his wins have come by knockout. Not going to get one right here in this position, though, Scott. He's going to do something to get uh, back he's gonna to have to fight. He, yeah, he's going to have to work really hard to get out from underneath Tyler. Tyler's going to start to throw these short elbows from this half, half guard. There is some space underneath there that you're going to see. You're going to see him try to create. You can see Tyler trying to, trying to, looks like he's trying to bring that right foot over, which is creating space. There's a gap, and that's what Josh is using to recover God. King just smothering Diekman thus far in the opening round, and now he's sort of pushing him toward the center of the ring mat. Josh is doing pretty well defending himself. He's not taking any great punishment and not allowing Tyler to eat. Increase to a better position. Round number one of three in the heavyweight division. So far, all Tyler King since that early takedown. Diekman trying to work the midsection, maybe soften King up a bit. Josh is being active off his back, so he's doing a pretty good job, and he's defending pretty well. He has the overhook right now, controlling that arm. Little head control, little head and wrist control. King just really there we go. Josh did a nice job trying to push him off. Trying to get back to his feet. King at this point just really applying the pressure, not doing a lot to punch himself out. Oh, himself. nice right hand off his back. Now Josh is looking like he was trying to attack the head for a second. Trying again there. He's still, like you said, remaining active while on his back. 2.20 to go in round number one of this heavyweight battle. Now these guys weighed in yesterday at 260. I guarantee you they're not 260 tonight. And Absolutely not. 280 pound man sitting on your <laughs> sternum for the better part of five minutes. Who played in the NFL. Yes, and rather <laughs> exhausted. Diekman working the ribcage. Yeah, you know, you see, a lot of people think that's something that doesn't have, get a reaction, but it does. It oh, allowed, absolutely. allowed Tyler to bring that arm and the elbow down and, and negate the cross face. You do those types of things to try to make your opponent react. Josh trying desperately to explode those hips over. Tyler looking at a head nom triangle, and Josh did a nice job of escaping that. Thought for a second, Diekman might turn himself over. I I think I'm trying to take a better look, and I think Tyler does have full mount. Diekman almost came dangerously close to absorbing another low blow, and I'm not sure if you saw that one, Scott. It would have been deja vu all over again. And if Josh is not wearing a scale cup front to back <laughs> after that last knee to the groin. 115 to go in round number one. All Tyler King thus far. But you know, Diekman again doing a nice job on his back. Tyler's controlling the fight for sure. He's active, but he's not. There's not a right. lot of punishment going on right now. So it, it's more Josh surviving this. Now finally Tyler passed, did that very well to side control. And now you're gonna see him try to push the attack from this position. There's a lot of space. You see all that space? That's what Josh is gonna turn back into. He should try to turn into that now. See if King can unload some knees. He's got an opening to that rib cage. I'd like to see Josh drop his elbow inside Tyler's, Tyler's hip there. He's, Needs to continue to push that down to create some space and turn into him. I will see who blinks first here. The closing 30 seconds of round number one. Josh Tyler, doing a nice job. Tyler King in that side mount, like you said. 
Josh gonna try to sit up and put his arm underneath his armpit. He just needs to use the opposite arm to do so. The Dinkman does look somewhat gassed here, Scott. I don't know if I'd call it gas. He's definitely fatigued. Oh, he's fighting tired. for breath here. He's a little bit tired, sir. Again, he's being smothered, so sure. that makes all the sense in the world. Final 10 seconds of round number one. Tyler King in the black trunks in control thus far. Josh Diekman in the red, fighting from his back and surviving round one, but a good start for Tyler King. Absolutely a good start. That's definitely a 10-9 round to Tyler. But there was very little damage done. Right, it wasn't one of those rounds where Tyler King is unloading elbows and, or in the case of Andre Supta, working the legs and just leaving Brock Costa's legs exactly like correct. on that band weight bout. Nothing to that extent, but more than enough to win the round, and I don't think there's any question about that. So we'll see. If you're Josh Deakman now, you got to first avoid that takedown, I would assume, going into round number two. Now, you see what Josh is talking to? He's talking to Tim Burrell. Tim Burrell's his ground coach, his jiu-jitsu coach. Mm -hmm. So Tim is going to help him if he gets in that same possession again how to work his way out of it maybe something he saw or didn't see in the same breath you're going to see the guys from from bishops and tyler's corner looking to ask him to improve his position and be more active in there well if the fight does go in that direction in round number two we will see how josh deekman responds and we'll see if it is more of the same for Tyler King if he sticks to that game plan. Let, let's see if Tyler wise. does shoot that takedown right. Right, up, right away again. Or perhaps maybe throw him off guard and do the exact opposite. Very possible. All right, round number two, here we go. Again, Josh I Diekman. Like, I like the short, the, sh the low stance Diekman has. Diekman in the red, and Tyler King does shoot for that takedown. Right away. Right out of the shoot. Picks Lots up slam Diekman. Here. I'm expecting big, a big slam, slam at some point, and there it is. Big slam. Josh needs to do the best he can work his way up the back of that cage. He's laughing it off. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler King had him in the air for about 30 seconds. Looked like a Dave Batista WWE move there. Well, I'll be honest with you, it's not that often I would imagine Josh, Josh gets any frequent flyer miles. <laughs> <laughs> Think of it again, like you said, kind of laughing it off. Not in a disadvantageous position here. It does have his back against the cage. He has an underhook and he needs to work that underhook and, and work his way up. We'll see if the advice from his corner comes into play here in round number two. Tyler's gonna look to control his head, cross face and stop him from coming up. Josh giving up his back here, but if he can get up quick and turn around, he should be okay. He, he does appear to be getting to his feet, like you said, giving up his back and There's there a, it is. There he does, nice job turning around. He should use his cross face here, otherwise he's gonna go right back down. Single, single, Tyler, single. Jo Josh. Single. Here is corner yeah, blowing yells for, for the a single, single leg takedown. And Tyler did a nice job responding. He is trying to apply the single. Josh needs to put some pressure on Tyler's head. There Push it is. the head down. Tyler took him right back down again. The single leg takedown like Tyler King's corner was calling for. He was listening. Three and a half to go in round number two. Tyler King back on top. I would have liked to seen Josh pull Tyler's head up from that position prior to him being taken back down. So he wouldn't, he wouldn't have been able to get that uh, takedown so easily. But Tyler's doing a great job now just maintaining where we were the last round. Yeah, I'm surprised as well, Scott, that he didn't try to do that, because I would think that Diekman would want to get this fight standing up, where he can let his hands go a bit, and he really didn't do the move necessary to keep it from going back down well, to the camp. What you saw, too, is the second Diekman's thrown at one punch or two, then you see Tyler, he just shoots right underneath and goes yeah. for the takedown. He do doesn't look like he wants to stand and trade. Now, certainly Diekman's got to work on his takedown defense if he can get back to his feet before the end of this round. There is a lot of time left, just under three minutes. Side out now had, by had, King. Had, and that was as a result of, uh, it looked like Josh was looking for an arm bar there. Josh was looking, excuse me, nice job, but Josh got the reversal on that. Job, he works his man. way up. Nice job. Tyler does have underhooks. Nice knee Big by knee. Deepman. That took right the legs the right out from underneath him. I think that one caught King. Completely off time. Certainly woke him up a bit. You can see Tyler trying to step around for the trip. And Josh needs to break out of this clinch and, and try to get himself. Nice takedown by Deepman. Diekman hooks him right behind the right leg, takes him down, and now we'll see if Diekman can do something while he is on top. Not really in a good mount, but Josh has, a has really good ground and pound. Excellent top game. He's doing a nice job sitting through and spinning right here. Yeah, if King he, just kind of squirms his way out of it. If he can, if Josh just needs to clear those legs and, and work from a, a, a more stable position, Tyler did a great job of keeping him off balance and not allowing him a firm position to strike from. Two minutes to go in round number two. Not the kind of action we expected, but a great fight nonetheless. It's been very interesting to see this chess match at play. Absolutely. We'll see if that Diekman ground and pound can... Jo Josh needs to get his hips forward or else he's going to keep getting pushed off. Although he's leaning Two over pretty well. And Tyler's eating a couple of those. 
Yeah, King really absorbed two big overhand rights, perhaps three that got through. This is a 16-fight veteran in, in Josh that, that knows what he's doing in here, and he's been down this road before. Nice job passing to half. There's a short elbow. 117 to go. And a shoulder punch, creating more space. Josh is talking to him, right? <laughs> They're actually having a conversation. I wonder what's going on right there. Uh, I don't think I want to quote what might have been said there. You see, Tyler's trying to break Josh's posture by keeping his head pulled in tight. And of course, Josh is trying to get the complete opposite, his head up to Another create puncher and more power right. to strikes. Couple of those punches coming straight down. Josh has nice He's position. Here, Scott. He needs to, Tyler's doing a great job scrambling right back to his feet. Nice job. I now Josh needs to push him off. There's a big right hand. Here Another it comes. Big right. But and it's take down takedown. by Tyler King. The heavyweights bringing it fast and furious tonight. Great response by Tyler King. I thought for a second there he might have been dazed, and that could have been all she wrote, but King fights back and just immediately shoots in for the takedown. Surprising turn there in that exchange. But Deekman's certainly been the aggressor in the stand-up with his hands. Now both guys are definitely tied and gassing a bit, and if they're not working soon, I think the only thing that's going to save them is the round. And it's about to end soon, 10 seconds, or just under 10 seconds to be exact. Referee Kevin McDonald, I think, would have normally stood them up any other time, but right. the round's about to end. Wow. Exciting second round here between the heavyweights, Josh Deekman and Tyler King. Deekman kind of smirking as he makes his way back this, to the corner. This is what Josh Deekman loves, and that's why he's still fighting. These are the, the fights that he lives for. Well, Deekman at least getting an opportunity, Scott, in this round to let his hands go a bit, and you saw the effects, but Tyler King standing up to it. Not a lot of heavyweights may be able to absorb that damage, but King not only absorbed it, but after that big right hand against the cage, shot right in and got the takedown again. Well, Josh Deekman's got 12 wins, eight of which are knockouts. Right. So you, I think you're a thousand percent correct when there's only been four guys that have <laughs> right. he's beaten that haven't been knocked out. And I'm so. sure they took some shots in those fights. I can't imagine them not doing it. Josh loves the brawl. Well, we go into round number three, Scott, and we've seen the first two rounds start out the same way. Tyler King shooting in for the takedown. Deekman, what does he do to defend that? What Josh has to try to do is not overcommit to his punches. He wants to punch right now. Josh is a stand-up fighter. That's what he does best. But when he overcommits to his punches, that allows Tyler, the taller man, to shoot underneath. Right, so I think if it was me, if I was Josh, I would try to establish that jab a little bit and not overcommit to my punches. The crowd giving both competitors a round of applause as we go to round number three. This one's been exciting. Just like all fights, here's Look at this, Josh they're calling Deepen. each other out. Let's go, let's throw hands. Let's throw hands, Josh says. And Tyler fell far for a second yeah. and immediately shot in. Josh should look to get right back up. Josh wants to stand and throw punches. Now he has him crucifixed. He's got both arms isolated. Tyler did a nice job of getting out of it. Better job that time by Deekman, who's more prepared for the takedown. And as you see, kind of reestablishes his position. Now he's the one on top and can do some ground and pound here. And he's got four and a half minutes to do it. Absolutely. A couple of big overhand rights, those hammer fists just coming down from Josh Deekman. Those aren't quite lunch boxes, but they're close. <laughs> And of, and of course, you're going to see Josh maintain good position. You, we still have plenty of time, four more minutes in this round. So if Josh just plays it smart, good, doesn't do anything, he has the sweep. That's what I was saying if Josh didn't get swept and they played it smart. But now they're back up. Oh. Deja vu in a sense, or at least reverse deja vu. Deakman was the one who took the brunt of a low blow in his last bout. This time it's Tyler King getting the knee to the groin. I am we'll going to now. do my best Joe Rogan impression and say, <laughs> we got to see that again, right? <laughs> Please, can I see that again? We'll see if Tyler King takes the time necessary, Scott. That was a factor in Josh Deakman's last fight. You and I both thought he didn't take enough time to collect himself. Here comes that knee. Now you're going to see Josh's head's down. He just threw, yep. He's always worse in slow motion. I think we need to see that from another angle. I wasn't quite sure if his lungs came to the top of his mouth <laughs> or stopped in his throat. Wow, well, that's a tough knee to take. Well, here's the one thing. Tyler King is taking his time, and he may need it to recover. And you're in a fight this big, and it's really been back and forth, arguably even at a round apiece. This is a huge round. This is the whole fight right here. You Absolutely. cannot step back in there until you are 100% ready to go. Now, let me say this, and all joking aside, absolutely unintentional knee. Of course. Two guys coming out of the clinch. Josh threw that knee. Right. He was He's hoping a to catch him on the way up. Exactly. Unfortunately, he wasn't all the way up when he caught him. 
And again, the height difference is a big deal too. You know, they, they, once Tyler starts to stand slightly up, right. his his chest is not where it was. And so again, uh, as much as you don't like to see this happen in the middle of a fight, totally unintentional. Yeah, Although it, I do it, like it, the replays. <laughs> Well, it does stall the momentum a bit, and it certainly stalls Deakman's momentum for Tyler King at least a chance to get a breather. There it is again. Do I love the gentleman doing the replays? Yes, I do. An even more egregious angle, and here's oh. the first angle. The guys tap hands, and we're underway yet again. All right, here we go. Back to the live action. Overhand right by Deakman. Deakman working those body punches, too. Tyler throwing flying knees. Knee. Yeah. That was a flying knee to the body. Again, pressing Josh Deakman against the cage. Looks like he's going to try to go for that single leg again, Scott. Yeah, Josh needs to base out and pull Tyler straight up. Get it? Well, he had the underhook to do it. Tyler's looking to go for that single. He needs to, Josh needs to spread his legs out, kind of base out yeah. a little bit here. And that's what he's and doing. He's starting to do that now, but you want to rip. Yeah. Little, little too he late. just picks him up and slams him right back down, so King adjusting. I'm not sure if he's yeah. going to, I looked for a second that Josh was squeezing a, a guillotine, excuse me, a, uh, a guillotine, but the arms were together, the hands weren't clenched. Oh, back to the ground here with 3.15 to go in the third and final round of this heavyweight bout. It's been back and forth action between Josh Diekman and Tyler King. Tyler King in the black trunks on top. What are you seeing here, Scott? Well, actually, I'm seeing Tyler fighting for position. He's trying to find a way to, to, to posture up and throw, throw punches. You see, Josh has a good overhook to that, that far arm. Josh's left arm over Tyler's right, trying to prevent that. Josh doing a good job defending the punches as Tyler tries to pass. What I don't see from Josh is him trying to work to get up. Right. He's defending well, but he's not working to get up or, or, or threaten, on, threaten anything off his back right now. And in a fight this close, he has to work his way up and try to do something to stem the tide here and turn the momentum. That's when Josh Deakman's at his best is standing yeah. up. That's, of course, where he wants it to be. I don't know if too many fighters who can win the fight in this position. And I don't think Josh Deakman's one of them. 222 to go in the third and final round. There's a little sweep that Josh looks like he's trying to get a... Uh, Tyler made a nice job passing the half. Trying to get that side mount. He's got side control now. Not taking Josh does have a far side underhook. He can work here to try to, to get himself up. Now, if Josh can just get to his right hip and try to tuck that arm back in, he needs to be on, he's actually on the, the, the opposite hip at the moment. Couple of knees, couple of knees to the body off, the, off this position. Nice job by Tyler making, passing to Mount. So what Josh is going to do right here is his best to, to, to negate this position, which is going to have to be control those punches. I, I'd, I'd be looking to, to try to buck up and, and break that, break that, um, that mount. Certainly looking a lot like round number one when Tyler King just really smothered right. Deakman. See, if Josh, now of course he's taking punches here, but Josh wants to push down on a knee and, and, and recover at least half guard. You want to try to escape this mount, but he's not doing too much to do that right now. I gotta say, I think the takedowns may very well be the difference in the fight if this goes the distance and we are close to it under one minute to go. Yeah, right, right now, I, if this turns out to be a split decision, I wouldn't be surprised if the fight ends the way we're seeing it now. If Deakman can't get to his feet and do something, make one last ditch attempt. Josh has the ability go. for his yeah. underhooks right now and he's just not attacking it. He's trying to muscle this. You have to break the mount, you have to put your get a hand or an elbow on, on the lowest point of your opponent's body, push him down and recover half. Some ground and pound here by Tyler King, big overhand and look at right. how strong Josh is working again. Great ground and pound, and <laughs> Josh used that to reverse him. We got, Tyler looks like he's trying to throw up an arm bar, but too little, too late, that's the round. And that'll do it for this fight. Tyler King raising his hands, he thinks he's the winner. The crowd does not agree, we'll see what goes down here. I think that even the crowd might agree, but they don't like the way he won the fight. Sure. Well, Josh Diekman almost had one last ditch attempt, Scott, to do something when he had Tyler King on his back, but just ran out of time in the third and final round. A very interesting fight, back one, and forth action all the way. One of the best parts about heavyweight fights is they usually don't go the distance. 
It's true, and you <laughs> see fighters with, what, 10 knockouts combined between the two of them, eight knockouts by Josh Diekman, knockouts in two-thirds of his wins. You almost expected this one to end early at some Ladies point, but that wasn't the case. This one actually goes the distance, believe it or not. So Josh Diekman holding his ground toward the end. Tyler King, I think, may have pulled this one out, Scott. I do think it's close. I think the takedowns really, to me, in my eyes, were the difference. I think they were, and it was the time that Tyler spent on top. Tyler spent a lot of time on top, maintaining position, trying to work from it. And that's tough, just time tough where that's just time where Deakman can't do anything in response, and that's the biggest thing. Correct. But we will see how the judges score it. Tyler King and Josh Deakman in the heavyweight battle. Certainly all that we thought it would be. Well, let's go down to Bill Carpenter for the particulars. Ladies and gentlemen, after three five-minute rounds of heavyweight action, let's go to the judges' scorecards for the decision. Judge Pat Avery has it 30 to 27. Dave Ginsburg scores 29-27. And Judge Wayne Lima scores 29-28. All three judges scoring for your winner by unanimous decision, Tyler King.